Hello, today I'll be making a guide on how I build models in KitHack Model Club. This is mostly for replicas, though you can use this for your own designs, but I will be making a replica aircraft. Specifically, today I'll be making the F-84G Thunderjet. This is mostly because it is a rather simple shape, it has a custom cockpit, it has some mirrored fuselages where I can explain how those work, and I will attach functional rockets to the bottom here. The first thing I always like to do is select an adaptive fuselage as the root part. You want it to be somewhere near the middle and quite large so you can put things on it, in it, or attach things to it. This is because the game calculates stress based off of root parts. So if something is attached many roots down, for example a wing, and you put a lot of stress on this wing, it will also put stress on this part, this part, and then the root part. And it will be more likely to snap off if you put it on the root part directly. This also goes for internal parts, like engines and ducted fans. If the ducted fan is somewhere else, like on the end of a wing, it's more likely to snap off the wing. But if you put it inside the root part and then offset it to where you want it, like this, then it's less likely to break. One of the most important parts in KitHack is the introduction of the bulkhead. Think of this like a loop that shapes the adaptive fuselage based on how you scale and morph it. You can also curve or flare them to round out the transitions. This overlay program I have here is called On Top Replica. I'll have a link in the description to this, but this basically just lets you have an overlay of what you're building in the game. You can set it to be partially transparent, and you can also allow clicking through it. So for example, if I'm trying to follow a blueprint and I want to shape things, I want to be able to click through the blueprint that I'm making. You can also use Control shift o to toggle the visibility of the overlay. Alright, let's start building this F-84. The first thing you want to make sure every time you build an aircraft is that you're building it in the right direction. If you start building this plane and you make the nose this way and you get all the way done with it just to test it out and throw it and it's backwards, that's going to be a huge pain in the ass to fix. So always, always check which way this arrow is pointing. A great way to build replicas in this game is to look at the fuselage shape of the aircraft and break it up into segments that you're going to build. So this front segment could be one, then the root part could be here, and then we need like one two, and maybe three more segments after that. So I'll make the front segment with an edge loop, then the first back segment, bulkhead, second back segment, bulkhead, and then finally the last edge loop. You can use the arrow keys to change the rotation of different parts. And things like edge loops and end caps need to be rotated the direction they're facing to be attached. Now, I'm going to switch on top replica to a blueprint by switching the window. And then I'm going to select the region that I want to build in, which specifically is this side profile here at the bottom. I'm going to change the opacity to about 50%. Scroll to scale it up and just roughly match the maximum width of the fuselage with what I have right here. Now to make the fuselage easier to see against the blueprint I'm going to set a primer color of bright red so it stands out much better. I'm gonna enable click through and I'm just gonna start shaping the aircraft how I want it. I'm using V to switch to internal view and pressing 2 to switch to the offset tool. You can right click on the bulkheads or use the nodes to change their scale. And it's the same thing with the edge loops. Alright, now that we have the rough shape of the fuselage, we can do some more fine tuning later. But it's time to move on to the cockpit. In KitHack, there are pre-made cockpits that you can use that are pretty close to some real-world counterparts, but they don't match quite what we're going for most of the time. 
So I like to make my own custom cockpit out of adaptive fuselages and bulkheads, just like the normal fuselage. The first step is to place a bulkhead. For cockpit frames, I like to use this bigger bulkhead because when you scale it down, the frame itself becomes smaller as well, whereas this small one has a much thicker frame. I'll attach two adaptive fuselages, and then look at the shape of the front glass. This seems to be straight edges with a round top. So a good match would be the N-type bulkhead. Some F-84Gs have this smooth bubble glass canopy, and others have frames throughout. I'm going to build the frame, since it's probably going to be easier to shape it. But you can also do bubble canopies with this method. Finally, for the front glass itself, you're going to want to add, it, add an edge loop. Now right-click on your fuselages and select Clear Plastic. Then you can offset and scale them how you want them to be. There we go. We have a custom shaped cockpit with a round glass canopy and a front glass that's also transparent. The unfortunate side effect about these cockpits is in FPV view. You don't actually have the cockpit itself to look down in. You can only look out the glass at the top. And you're probably going to have to paint some kind of dark color decal on the inside here to make it look like it isn't just attached to the top. Now to work on the wings and control surfaces. I almost always use the AF-1 mod wing because it's much easier to shape and it has less limits than the rest of the wings. Also, things like the AF-4 mod wing that are swept and the AF-5 mod wing do weird things to your center of lift. That's why I prefer to stick with the AF-1. I've got the overlay set to 50% opacity and click through mode on, so I can now shape and mold the wings how I want them to look. The F-84's wings are pretty simple, but there's still some important parts to note. The ailerons, as you can see here, cut off part of the wing segment about halfway down. So instead of making one wing and clipping ailerons into them, I'm going to actually make it two wing segments. Now, there's a space for us to put the ailerons on later. I'm going to add one more wing segment to the end, and this will be the curved part on the very tips of the F-84's wings, right before the fuel tanks. Now for the horizontal stabilizer and elevator. For straight designs like this that don't have any curve to them, you can use the AF-0 mod wing, which doesn't have as much lift as the AF-1, so it won't throw off your center of lift as much but you can't curve it, so sometimes you have to use the AF-1. For now, I'm going to use the AF-0. Again, I'm going to add these small AF-1 wing segments to the end of it. When adding control surfaces like ailerons, you can hover them over what the wing you want to attach and then press space and they'll automatically align to the slant of the wing. Then I can sweep them to match the sweep of the wing and adjust the span. Now just to make the vertical stabilizer. Because this part is curved and has multiple different segments that curve differently, I'm going to use different segments of AF-1 mod wing for this. Because AF-1 mod wing has an asymmetrical airfoil, if you don't mirror it, it will often do something that looks like this. That's why I recommend turning on symmetry when you place it, so it places two and it becomes symmetrical.
Next, I'm going to add the external fuel tanks on the wings of the F-84. For things like engine nacelles or landing gear housings, this is also useful. You'd think I'd want to put it on the edge of the wing tip right here, but if I were to fly this aircraft in turn or go over too high speed, it would likely snap off due to the high drag. So instead, I'm going to attach it to the root part of the aircraft. There's currently a bug with mirroring adaptive fuselages like this. Sometimes, when you're building something with adaptive fuselages and you make changes to it, or add new parts, it can mess up one side. So I recommend, instead of building it with symmetry, build it without symmetry first, then after you're done, place it back and offset it to where you want it. For these wing tanks, I'm going to use two adaptive fuselages and two end caps, and then curve the fuselages to match the curve of the real thing. The cool thing about end caps is if you set their width and height to 25%, and then mess with the scale slider, you can get them really small. Once you have your mirrored fuselage ready, in this case the fuel tanks, just grab it, turn on symmetry, and place it again. This will prevent any bugs happening with the other side. Then, you can offset it to where you want it. There we go. We now have the basic shape of the F-84 down. From here, you can make any slight adjustments you want and add the internals. As promised, I'll now show how to make functioning rockets in KitHack. For the F-84, it was equipped with Tiny Tim rockets, which is basically a big bomb with a rocket motor on the end. This is perfect for what we're trying to do, and it should look pretty good due to its scale as well. The first thing you need is a some sort of hard point. In this case, I'll use the structural pylon, but you can also use AF-1 wing segments as well. Next, you're, want, you're gonna wanna use a section of AF-1 wing, and this is where the magic of this comes in. Attach it to the bottom of the, attach it to the bottom of the pylon, and then Make everything as small as you possibly can. Like so. You might have to grab it from inside the pylon if it clips in. Next, attach a bulkhead to the wing, like this. You can add adaptive fuselages if you're going for a certain rocket shape, which I'm going to do with the Tiny Tim. Then comes the rocket motor. The best rocket motor to use for these detachable rockets is the DOX A9 rocket motor due to its high peak thrust and low burn time. If you're adding fins to your rocket, you may have to detach it and put it on the fuselage in the center so you can actually mirror the fins. In order for the fins to not collide with the pylon, spin the whole adaptive fuselage. Then you can put it back on your wing segment and offset it into place so that it fits. There you go, you now have a functioning rocket. To mirror it to the other side, just grab it and then place it with symmetry. To fire rockets, set their channels in the editor and then press the corresponding keys in flight. 